I think sometimes people get a mistaken idea of why a Christian is a Christian. I think everyone has this concept that a Christian stays a Christian because they have faith in it and they're putting some kind of unrealistic belief into something that doesn't exist. But for me, that's not true. You see, the reason why I'm a Christian is because God is real. I can't deny that fact. I would like to at times because there were times in my life where I would like to have said, no, there is no God. And I would have gone out and done my own thing and gotten away with what I wanted to do at the time. Because, you see, I've been backslidden at times. I've, I've gone away from God when I first got saved. I had one of those phenomenal, miraculous you know, salvations that, of course, it was overwhelming emotionally. But it also brought me to a place of despair because of that emotional relationship that I had with God. That I had gone to a place and I was in such extreme, severe suffering that I wanted to die. I even tried to kill myself. And had God not intervened, had God not done something miraculously with me, I'd be dead. So it's not just a question of the Christian putting some kind of like unrealistic faith into something that's not true or not real. There has to be an intervention. There has to be some part of God reaching down and touching a life. Otherwise, it's just a religion, and it's just a philosophy. I know a lot about philosophies. I know a lot about religions. I studied an awful lot of them at one point in time. I kind of, after getting saved, was very interested in what people believed in. I was curious as to why someone would choose anything other than God to follow. I wanted to know why and if Jesus was different than any other teacher, preacher, religious leader, or person that ever lived. Because for me, he was still alive. He had been resurrected. But in those days, other people had been resurrected also. Lazarus had been resurrected. Different people, different cultures had legends and stories about resurrection. I wanted to know bluntly why people believed in what they believed in and why Jesus and I and Christianity that I believed in was different than anything else in the world. What made me unique? What made me so different that I could say beyond any shadow of a doubt I have proven that God exists. Because I'd spent, oh, lots of years wrestling with this idea, well, did I really believe? And then, yeah, I, of course I believed. You know, I'm going back and forth at different times, you know, maybe the first 10 years of my life, even though I was trained, even though I was taught, even though I was experienced in the scriptures, and very well so, very adamantly so, there came a time when, when you're placed in God's own crucible, so to speak, when he wants to show you something and reveal it to you, and he wants to keep everyone else far away. He puts you right in the middle of the palm of his hands and he holds everything else away from you. So you have no feeling, no experience, no knowledge of God. Except for somewhere you know you're in a place where nothing else is inputting. And when I came to that place, I found myself knowing that God is real. Not just because of faith, but because I had been through the fact and reality that God is real because he came to me. He spoke to me. He talked to me. He acted as though he knew me. And he revealed things to me and he showed me things and he deals with me in a way that no one else and nothing else could have done or I could imagine or create for myself. You see, I can't make up some self-fulfilling prophecy. I can't cause circumstances of life to work out. There is no kismet force that seems to be activated in my life. I came to a place where I had to admit to myself, oh my God, there's someone out there greater than I am, something bigger than I understand, someone who seems to be so compassionate that 
I don't know if he really loves me. So I spent another 10 years proving that grace could not be frustrated, which is in a way a tragedy because how sad it might have been should God have decided to condemn me. But you see, God didn't want to do that. God had chosen me. God had selected me. God had decided that this person was going to be saved and he had written my name in his book of life. Now, I'd love to say that's because there's something good about me. But contrary to this coat I'm wearing, there's nothing good in me. I was not a great sinner when I got saved. I was not a great saint. I was actually just kind of a lonely little kid, you know, that was still growing up. Didn't have a father and barely had a mother and kind of had a strange relationship with my family. And it was kind of different, you know. I was a loner, all alone, in a family of four. But God saved me because He had a purpose for me. And he had a design that He wanted to use my life to touch someone at the end of my life. Now, it took a long time. Don't get me wrong. It took a long time to get to the place of knowing for facts every portion of Scripture. I know for a fact every line of that Scripture is in the Bible. I can prove. I can prove that it mean, it's meant to be there. It's supposed to be there. As a matter of fact, I can prove that God put it there. That it was inspired, intentionally designed by Him to be there for the person who's reading it as they read it, when they read it, the way they read it. And because I could, I know now why my life makes sense, why I am a Christian, and why I could never be anything else but a Christian. I can't deny that fact. It's like light. You can't deny the light that you have or the light that you are, because it automatically comes out when you start talking about it. When you flip on the switch, suddenly it's there. That's what it's like when the Spirit of God is in a person, because you may not understand it. You may not have great faith. And you may not have great miracles or all these other things that people get carried away about. But the one thing you can't deny is when God does something in your life. You can't run from that. You can't hide from that. You could lie about it. Sure, it's possible. But you see, even the lie gets exposed to the truth because the Holy Spirit said He would do that. God Himself said He would reveal lies for what they are. And he would reveal truth for what it is. And that's what he did when he brought his son into our lives, we who are Christians. We weren't great people of faith. We weren't like some kind of you know super saints, and we still aren't. There isn't one person in the world who's a super saint, or much holier than anyone else. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and all have been given grace in order to be where they're at today. And none are higher or lower. As a matter of fact, according to God, all have failed the test of righteousness. But because there's none righteous, no, not one, He can have mercy on all because none of them can measure up. So because He can, we can rejoice in the fact that God did it for us. God not only started this thing we call Christianity, He's going to end it for us. So that we will always have that reassurance that we'll never go through ever again this doubting life that we're in or this life of faith that we've begun to ever have a question as to whether or not we are what God has made us to be. And that is Christian. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I am Alpha. I am Omega. I am the beginning of I am the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty, who hath wrought and done it, calling the generation from the beginning. Who has done this? I have. I, the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am He. Sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ, that is what we are. Sanctified, the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly, and I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that called you who also will do it. For we don't do it of ourselves, but he does it in us. 
He that hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, that you are now made perfect by the flesh? What could you add to that which God is doing in you and has done for you? Nothing. There is in you nothing good, for in me there dwelleth no good thing. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me, for he shall make perfect that which is imperfect, and cause corruption to put on incorruption. It is God which worketh in you both to do and to will of his good pleasure. The reason why a Christian is a Christian isn't because of who he is, but because of what God has done. That's why you are who you are, Christian.